Hello everybody, this is DZ Maven here, and today I have a Gunpla special here. And I think this will be an interesting uh, video for some of you fellow Gunpla modelers and even general hobbyists. I think this will be an interesting video. kind of had this idea for this video actually about a couple months ago, but it kind of took me until now to kind of get around to getting everything together for this. But anyway, as you can see before you, there are several paint cans. Basically, this is a experiment I'm doing of sorts here. And basically, the idea is to try and see which top coat is best top coat. Um, as you can see, starting from the left to the right here, I have the ever popular in the US, the Tester's Dull Coat. And our next thing we have is the next most popular item, probably is the Tamaya Flat Clear. Following that, we're starting to get into some more exotic items here, more specialty items, is the Mr. Super Clear uh, Flat from Mr. Hobby. And following that is, uh, is another Mr. Hobby, this is the Mr. Top Coat, which is also flat. And at the very end, we have our cheap giant can of Krylon Flat Clear. <laughs> so yes, these are all flat top coats. Um, basically the idea is to kind of see and contrast and compare the results and usage of all these different top coats here. Uh, in preparation for this little experiment here, I've got some handy dandy plastic spoons. As you can see, they are. I have gone ahead and did a few things to these spoons here, as you can see here. Uh, immediately you can notice that I have painted half of these spoons with a glossy paint that I just had some leftover paint for. And if you can look really closely there, I have scribed in three panel lines into each of these spoons here. Now, this isn't just a test of how the top coat looks here, but it's also a test of how the top coat will affect various factors on the surface of the plastic here. So. I have one side that is painted, which is this red-orange color here, and the other side is just bare plastic, it's not painted or anything. And what I'm going to do here with these three lines I have here, is this bottom line is going to be a just a regular pin Gundam marker line right there, right across the bottom. In the middle here, I'm going to use the pouring type Gundam marker, which is more of a lacquer based ink. That'll be in this middle line. And on this very top line, I'm going to use the Tamaya enamel panel liner, which is the more professional uh, panel lining method here. So it's basically going to go from amateur to medium to basically pro like on top here. In addition, I'm going to find a water, some scrap water side water slide decals I have and put those on the top here, half of it on the glossy side, half on the bare plastic to see how the top coat will affect the water slide decals. So I think this will be a very interesting experiment here because I've used a few of these top coats before and sometimes I've had good results with them, sometimes I have not had good results with them so I think it'll be interesting to see. Also on the back here I have all of these numbers here one, two, three, four, and five, that way I can keep track of which top coat is on which spoon here. Basically, it's just going to be in the order, just like you see here. One, two, three, four, five. Starting with the testers here. Now, if you're curious about the price of these paints here, uh, I got the testers dull coat, which is a lacquer-based top coat paint, which is pretty common in the United States. Uh, I picked this up for about $7, so that's probably the usual price you would get for this sort of thing. Over here, the Tamaya Flat TS-80. Here, I've used this a few times before in the past, and I've had some pretty good results of it. Uh, I got this for $10. This is a little bit more expensive, $10, because it's a... Well, they say some of these are made in the U.S., but they generally are still a bit of an import product here. Tester's Dole could I've used before, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it isn't. It depends on how good the nozzle is on this. I have found that Tester's nozzles are not very good. The nozzles on the Tamaya and the Mr. Top Coat I found are actually pretty good here, and I usually prefer those because you got a little bit more control of them. Over here we have this is definitely an import item. This is Mr. Hobby Mr. Super Clear flat. Uh, again, this is a lacquer based, I believe, is what this is. I have not used this before, so it'll be 
I'll be curious to see how this compares to the Tamiya and the Testers dull coat. And lastly, we have the, well, not lastly, we have the last of the actual hobby spray paints here is the Mr. Top Coat here. Um, this is the only kind of oddball out of the bunch here because this is actually a acrylic top coat, which is kind of a rarity with hobby spray paints. It's kind of, I'm actually surprised there are not more acrylic spray paints available. You would think that maybe Tamaya or Tester would actually get into the business of making of making some um, acrylic spray top coats, especially a gloss clear acrylic top coat, which would be incredibly useful for panel lining, but who knows why they haven't gotten into that. Um, seems like only Mr. Hobby is the only company that's kind of makes an acrylic top coat. And I used this for the Master Grade BO, and it, w it actually worked out really, really good. I used it for that. And lastly, I have the Mr. Krylon, or not Mr. Krylon, <laughs> just Krylon Clear Flat. Probably the most common uh, paint you will find. Um, there's also Rust-Oleum, but they're probably comparable here. 25% more paint, and this was about $4. Um, the price on the Mr. Top Coat, I forgot to say, that was about $9. And Mr. Super Clear was the most expensive, and this and at a... $14. So, uh, I'll be curious to see how the cheap, common, flat, clear paint uh, compares to the Mr. Hobby paints. I'm expecting this to go on really thick, so it's probably not going to be that good, but I figured I'd put it in because some people might not have any, or might not have these options here, so we'll, we'll see how that works out here, so. Okay, everyone. It's been about a day since I did the top coating of my uh, test spoons here. Uh, let them dry thoroughly here and I've taken them back inside to basically take a closer inspection of these and to see what the results are. So um, I think I have them in order here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're in the same order, one through five, and I got the uh, paint cans are in the back here. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, the first one here, which is the number one spoon. And this one had the testers spray enamel flat clear. Some people call this dull coat. So anyway, let's take a good close look here and see how this turned out here. So <clears throat> it does have a very nice, probably say pretty even matte finish, I would say, on the way it looks. Uh I do starting at the top here, the water slide decal looks pretty good here. I don't see any remaining shininess on the decal which kind of tells me that the matte coat went on maybe a little thick but it kind of evened out so i guess that's good uh, moving on down here the enamel paint line looks fine i don't really see any bleeding or anything from that maybe just maybe just very very slight maybe on the bare plastic but that could just because of the sanding now moving on down here to the real type pouring marker line and the panel line from the uh, Gundam marker here. There's quite a bit of excessive bleeding caused from this top coat here, which is... Uh, this is not really su surprising to me because I've had this problem before with the testers um, paint. Uh, something in it is just causing these ink panel lines to melt and just... It just turns out awful, awful. So I'm kind of, I'm 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 not surprised by this, but I'm also surprised at how poorly this did compared to all the other ones. So so yeah, it's just yeah, this just really isn't that good if you're using ink for your panel lines or any sort of ink, really. But yeah. all right, so number two here, this is the Tamaya Black Clear TS80. And I'm taking a good close look here at this here. The decal looks pretty good here. It looks like it's pretty well. I do see just a very, very slight amount of the glossiness of the decal, but it's not really that noticeable unless I look really closely at it. Uh, it looks like it's adhered and sealed on there pretty well here, so I guess rub on it. It's not going to come off or anything. Uh, the evenness of the coat looks pretty good, I would say. It's probably... Actually, you know what I'll compare it to the. It's comparable to the testers here, I would say here. So, uh, the 
enamel panel line looks good don't see any problem there the uh, real touch marker line uh, it's kind of hard for me to tell if it bled any but it doesn't look like it did um, I don't know how well that how, how close you can see that on the camera here but it looks pretty close to the way it was before I do have some before and after shots of the spoons I will show at the end of the end of this segment here so you can kind of look for yourselves here and the bottom panel line the Gundam marker line looks pretty good I don't see any sort of bleeding from this at all really so I think that's pretty much a big win here so so yeah the Tamaya stuff is um pretty good all right so number three here this is the Mr. Super Clear and this actually seems very very comparable to the Tamaya uh, most of the glossiness of the water slide decal is pretty much hidden. I mean, I still can see the edges just slightly, ever so slightly on that. Uh, looks like it's sealed on there pretty good here. It's not going to come off. Uh, enamel panel line, again, looks okay. The real touch marker line, eh, it looks like it bled just maybe a slight bit here. It looks like it bled maybe just slightly bit on the plastic side here. But, I mean, it looks like it's okay on the painted side. But, it's definitely not as bad as the testers. So, and moving on down to the Gundam marker line. The Gundam marker line looks good. It looks fine. Uh, evenness of the coat looks pretty good. Again, it's comparable to what I've seen with the testers and the Tamaya here, so... No real complaint there. It went on pretty fine. Um, so yeah, I think this was pretty good here. This may be just very slight amount of bleed, bleed there, but yeah, pretty good. Alright, so number four here is the Mr. Top Coat. This one right here this is the acrylic based one. And taking a look here, the evenness of the coat here looks pretty good. It doesn't look quite as matte as the other ones I've seen. It's Probably leans a little closer to maybe a satin finish almost, I'd say. But it still looks pretty good. The decal... Um, it looks like... I can I can see the, see the shininess of the decal pretty easily in this when it's in the light. And it's like maybe just a very slight amount of silvering on the edges. I mean, that could just be because of the decal didn't really apply very well or... I don't know if that's because of the top coat or not here, but it's sealed on there though. It's not gonna I'm not gonna be able to rub it off or anything, so but I can see the edges a little bit on it, so maybe it didn't seal on completely with this, but enamel panel line looks like it's unaffected, which should be the norm. Uh the real touch marker line uh it looks okay. I can't tell if some bleeding happened here or not. I have to look at the uh, before and after pics to take a closer look at that here, but there is some bleeding right here. Uh, this looks okay on the painted side to me. The gun the marker here looks like it's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like it's not really affected at this by this at all here. So again, that's pretty good here. And so yeah, so the Mr. Top Coat looks pretty good. Yeah. All right, and the last one here, number five here, sort of my wild wild card here, the Krylon, the cheap Krylon you can get in a giant can here. So how did this compare to the actual hobby paints here? So the overall finish, it looks good. It's got, I don't know if you can tell here on the camera here, there's a very, very slight bit of orange peel on this just very very slight but it's not really that noticeable once you look at it real closely uh the decal is pretty much completely sealed on here and that, again that's probably because this there's a lot of um there's a lot of paint that that went on here so the enamel line looks okay i think so i, I know this one i tried to clean up a little bit before i did so it's probably why it looks a little smudgy here uh, the real touch line looks like it's pretty much unaffected by the Krylon, which I'm surprised by. I would think the Krylon's paint would be a little harsher on this, but it looks like it fared okay. 
and the gun and marker line looks okay. Maybe just a very, very, very slight bit of bleed right here on the plastic side, but it's barely noticeable. But, yeah, the Krylon performed better than I expected it to, so I think it's probably okay, maybe, I guess. So, but speaking of these paints in general here, uh, the experience of spraying and using these, let's, let me talk about that real quick here. Uh, the like I said before, probably at the start earlier in this video, the nozzles on the tester paint tester spray paint cans. I don't really like them that much because they tend to put out a lot of paint and they're kind of hard to control. They just feel kind of cheap, and it's probably real easy to overspray with the tester spray can. So that's that. that my experience with this still kind of holds true even after using this during this experiment. It didn't feel as good as the these Japanese made paint cans here which all of these have really nice nozzles on them that are that are easy to control and they don't dump out a ton of paint on you at once here so you can you can do fine mist with these a lot easier than you can with the tester spray can now the Krylon here is kind of a different experience here um, this stuff comes out like a hurricane and you've got to be really really careful how much paint you you have to be really aware of how much paint you is coming out of this thing so this to blast out of the can and I had to normally I'm about five or six inches away from the part when I'm spraying you probably saw it on the video the Krylon you have to back up probably twice that distance maybe about, about a foot or so in order to not overspray so the Krylon might be okay for probably just real simple kits that you're not not don't really care about that much um, but I, it's probably going to be overkill for really tiny parts too. I can probably really see that just being complete overkill for that. So, but, um, I guess the results are here. So, I mean, if I had to say one was the worst, a big loser here was definitely the testers dull coat, which really disappointed me and how much bled it caused on panel lines. And it's the nozzle, not very good. It's hard to control. The downside the other thing is that this is the easy one to come across in the U.S., which is kind of unfortunate here. Um, out of these three Japanese-based ones here, which one is probably the best here? Um, depends on what you want to do here. I think both Mr. Superclear and the Tamaya are pretty comparable, and these are both pretty good. Uh, Mr. Top Coat is kind of a special case here. It's harder to get and a little more expensive, but it is an acrylic-based Top Coat, so it does have the advantage of being able to resist um, enamel paint layers on top probably better I would say I mean I didn't test that here but I would imagine since it's a different type of paint from these it will probably work better with um, panel lining and lastly the Krylon here is probably the easiest to find and the cheapest but the results were okay surprisingly I thought this would do worse but it didn't so I was surprised I mean it says no runs on the can so so I guess if you just want to be cheap with your top coating, I guess a can of Krylon or rust only might be okay. So, yeah. So, anyway, those are the results of this here. I hope you found that in, found that informative and interesting because I certainly did. I was a little bit surprised by the results, but the Krylon fared better than I expected it to. Tester is completely just kind of failed <laughs> to me. So, if so you're looking for a good top coat for your Gunpla, I'll probably go stick with some of the ones in the middle here. Krylon's good if you want to just be really cheap, I guess, but you can I I can imagine you can probably overspray with that really, really easily, so but yeah. So anyway, that's it. Uh leave a thumbs up if you like this like this video. Uh leave any comments or questions below, and I will see you guys next time when I have another interesting special video to make. So anyway, bye bye. Thanks for watching.